Folks, today's video is going to anger and upset hams. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the front end on this ICOM IC705. Essentially, we're going to rectally probe it with a couple of different devices and see the level output as it's displayed on the radio. In order to do this, we're going to use a couple of different tools and a couple of different devices. I don't want to waste anybody's time, so let's go ahead and get started. PCBWay.com is the perfect place for creators to get the parts and components that they need for their projects. Whatever your needs, PCBWay has you covered. PCBWay.com is a market leader in all things for printed circuit boards. If you have any questions or need help, check out the support portal at PCBWay.com. All right, folks, here is the Tiny SA Ultra. I just powered it up, and uh, this is what the interface of the screen looks like. This has been calibrated and level tested, and I can cover that in another video if necessary. But what we want to do for today's test is I'm going to use this as a signal generator. So I can go into the mode and I can switch it to signal generator. And then here I am greeted with a bunch of different settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to test on 7.1 megahertz. So I'm going to test, I'm going to set my output frequency. The other thing is, is that we want to test our IC705's S meter, and we're going to take a look and see how it reports or responds to an S9 signal. And I'm sure all the hams remember from their tests that an S9 signal is negative 73 dB, give or take. I'm sure some of the legit hams in the comments can correct me on that if I'm wrong. But uh, what I want to do now is I want to set my output signal for negative 73. And that's how I do that. We're not going to change or add any modulation. We're just going to create a tone. We're not going to do any sweeping. We're not going to have any external gain. Our output is going to be a sine wave, sinusoidal wave. So this is now configured. The next thing we need to do is we need to configure a test scenario with another Tiny SA. This is the Tiny SA Ultra. It's the new version, larger screen. We are going to also use my legacy VNA or Tiny SA. Let me turn that on and get it set up right now. So I wanted to take a couple seconds to talk a little bit about S-meter and what it is. And um, here you can see an S-meter is an indicator often provided on communication receivers such as amateur radio or shortwave broadcast receivers. The scale of markings are derived from a system reporting signal strength from S1 to S9 as part of the RST system. So when we come down here, what I wanted to show was right here. In the 1930s, it was agreed that an S9 corresponds to 50 microvolts at the input of the receiver. But this was not a measure of power received as the input impedance of receivers was not standardized. So that means that your power does change based off of the input of your receiver, the resistance or your impedance. For modern radios, it's 50 ohms. So when we come down here in the examples table, what you can see is like a weak signal of S2 corresponds to negative 115 dBm or 40 microvolts. Strong signal strength of S8 is uh, negative 79 dBm or 25 microvolts. And here in the table, you can see 50 microvolts is negative 73 dBm. And that's why we're using that to test at an S9 level. Okay, so here's the old tiny SA that I have. And uh, having these devices is fantastic. And what I have is it's set for a, uh, a scan from 6.6 .6 megahertz to 7.6 megahertz. So it's a one megahertz sweep or scan, and it'll have our output signal of 7.1 megahertz in the center. So let me go ahead and connect all the wires. I always got to do that. It's a really nice stand that I have there, right? And no, I am not uh, using a wrench to tighten that. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn this on. So now we are injecting a signal. And here you can see the signal on the old tiny SA is right at 7.1 megahertz. And it's like 72.3 dB. So it's close. It's not exact. But uh, this is ham radio, not a NIST rocket lab. So we, uh, we're happy with this. Now, I'm sure everybody's going to say, well, hey, they could both be equally as wrong in the right direction and all this other stuff uh, to discredit the test. What I've noticed in the past is that when you do tests on ICOM equipment, if you use this cheaper uh, gear, people will criticize the gear. Now, if you use this gear to test against Chinese radios, people love the gear. 
But uh, this is what we're going to do. Maybe we'll just do one more test, like a sanity check. Okay, what we have here is the Siglin SSA 3121X. And we are doing the sweep configured the same way. We are starting at 6.6 uh, .6 and going up through 7.6. And uh, what you can see is that at marker one here, we are at 7.101457 megahertz. And we're hanging right around 73, negative 73 dBm. And this is what's being fed into the Siglent. So let me just get a little bit of a shine there for you. And it is the exact same configuration. All right, folks, now it's time to feed it into the radio. Now, folks, we went through all that hassle to demonstrate that the Tiny SA is in fact putting out 73, negative 73 dBm, because I know what's gonna happen. Everybody is going to discredit the Tiny SA Ultra. So here we are with the ICOM 705, and a couple of things that I just wanted to show as a baseline. If I hit this button, my RF gain is set at 50%. You can see that my preamp two is on. So let me go into my function and let me just turn that off. So we have no preamp going on right now. For the sake of the scope, what I wanna do is I wanna show that our reference level is set to zero dBm. So there's no trickery taking place there. And we are set for a CW uh, filter. So when I take a look at the Tiny SA Ultra, you can see that it's off. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this on. Now you should be able to hear the tone and I'm not seeing anything register anywhere. Not on the S meter, not on the waterfall or anything. So we should be registering at a S9 given the input level of the signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this Oh, That's AF gain. Let me turn my RF gain up. Now, as I start to turn that up, we can see the signal here. Let me turn that down. So we're starting to get an S3 signal here on the S meter. Now, one of the things that I can do is I can go back into function. I could turn my preamp on the one, and now you can see it jump from an S3 to an S7. So that would be four S units. Now, maybe that's how this thing was tested or calibrated, I don't know, but I can also go back into my RF gain and I can continue to turn this up until we're at S9. So there you go. Maybe it's calibrated correctly, maybe it's reporting correctly, I don't know. I would doubt, um, I don't like the idea that I have to have my preamp on and I have to have my gain set so high. Let's go ahead and drop this gain back down to 50, which I think is a reasonable level and you see it's at S1. So let me go back into function, turn my preamp on two now. And you can see that it jumped from a one to a three. Now again, I can use my gain to get to a nine. This time I don't have to go quite as high, but that's where I have to go to get this to display an S9 signal. Um, I don't know if that's right. I don't think it's right. It doesn't seem right, but uh, that, that may be the case. One more thing I wanted to check because I know somebody will bring it up. So what I want to do now is I want to change this from CW to single sideband. And you can see that the signal level is exactly the same. Now, because we like fun, we are going to use the Signet SDG 1062X. And this is a signal generator or a frequency generator or a noise generator or alternative waveform generator or arbitrary waveform generator. I think it depends on where you're from. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this for 7.1 megahertz. And then I want to come down here to the amplitude and I'm going to set this for 200 millivolts peak to peak. And I have this signal is going to be running through a step attenuator with the appropriate amounts of attenuation. And then here we are with our tiny SA. Oh, look at that. We're picking up stuff already. Let me go ahead and turn this on. And then you can see on the tiny SA, we have a signal at 7.100013. It's bouncing around a little bit megahertz at 72.8 dBm. So the signal is consistent coming out of here that was coming out of the other tiny SA is measured consistently here, which was measured consistently on the, the Siglent uh, spectrum analyzer. We're going to take the signal out of this generator and put it into the 705 and see what we get. 
All right, so here we are set up with the uh, Siglin SDG going into the 705, and I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the signal on. And uh, there we are, we have the same three S3 on our S meter. Um, not sure what else to say. If I take a look at this, our RF gain set at 50%, and we do have preamp two on. Now, I'm not saying anything bad about the 705. I love the 705. What I am saying is, is that I did find the results of this interesting. And I expected something different than what I got. And what I'm hoping is, is that other people, smart people, legit hams who are watching this video can explain, expand, or provide some sort of positive uh, feedback that suggests what is actually going on here. Anyhow, that's going to wrap it up. If you've got any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody. Totally appreciate it.